I have one thing to say mm-hmm. before we get into the state of terror review. Uh, this at first episode, this inaugural episode of Hitto Book Club. Okay, okay. If Hillary Clinton has one thousand fans, I'm one of them. <laughs> If Hillary Clinton <laughs> has a hundred fans, I'm one of them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't know why you're laughing. I'm not. This is a serious if moment. If Hillary Clinton has one fan, I'm one of them. And if she has no fans, I must have fucking killed myself. <laughs> After reading State of Terror. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to a very special bonus episode at the office, everybody. Gage just came out as a Hillary supporter. That's me. I'm with her. Welcome back to the show, the long-awaited book review. Hitto Book Club number exactly. one. We're recording this on uh, May 28th. Yeah. Uh, just like we, how May. we promised, end of May, we'd get it to you all. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, and it's going to go up early for the patrons, literally right after we finish recording. And then uh, Sunday... June, whatever that is, because it won't be May, because we're recording this in the end of May. Yeah, this is this is definitely the end of May. Uh, if you are yeah. a patron, listen to this early. Congrats. If you're not a patron, but you want to get our early content, patreon.com slash head in the office pod. You know exactly what to do. You can become a patron. No reviews to read today, because this isn't a regular episode, but Thanks. we'll get to those uh, at the next week's episode that you all will hear. You know but, how we roll. Like Gage said, special episode, State of Terror review. I think it might be time to dive right in. We've been talking about it for a while, folks. That's right. That's right. Before we dive in, make sure to check out socials, et cetera. TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, you know the whole deal. You know what to do. Hitto Extras account. We have lives going up there all the time now. Exactly. Debate demons. Uh, so check us out, and I hope you uh, I hope you enjoy it. Hope I hope you enjoy, enjoy what this. we got going on right now. So uh, I just want to start in the very first chapter uh-huh. when she starts, like, describing, like, describing just, like, everything, what the fucking characters look like, what they do, like, who they are, their names. Mm-hmm. She starts describing our main character, Ellen Adams, Ellen right? Adams. the Secretary of State for Douglas Williams, her political rival. The American Secretary of State. <laughs> the American Secretary of State, Ellen Adams, who's Secretary of State for the 45th President of the United States, Douglas Williams. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because they love to use everybody's title every chance they can. It's a big trend in this book. Side note, I, I cannot help but note that uh, the number of chapters in this book is 45. It's perfect. And I think that just really fully encapsulates the uh, complete obsession Hillary Clinton had with Donald Trump. It's so perfect. Everything about this book is just perfect yeah i want to preface this also with this is like the first fucking novel that i've read since high school Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's crazy the first novel i've read of my own volition in like 10 years yeah and it was a hate read really oh yeah i was powering through it i was doing this i was playing Ring. but anyway i digress oh yeah back to the first chapter in her description of ellen adams she says quote her spanx concealed her love of eclairs that is the most <laughs> passive aggressive way I think I have ever heard an author try to call somebody chubby. Yeah. Why, why, why did they think that that was like charming? I, I don't know. The, this opening scene is just describing how Ellen Adams just fumbled a geopolitical conference. Oh like my a, God. A deal with South Korea. And she's coming back to the United States for the Secretary of State, or not, uh, for, for the, the State of Union address. Yes. For Douglas I think it's the first one, right? The first one. And they also gloss over. She, she not only fumbled the bag with South Korea, but I think they also mentioned that she destabilized a region. But that's the only mention you ever get of that. Also, by the way, the president doesn't get a State of the Union address as soon as they're inaugurated, but whatever. Yeah, exactly. Because the whole thing is like they've only been here for three months and now they're dealing uh-huh. with this big crisis. Anyways, uh, it's <laughs> Ellen Adams coming back from South Korea. Apparently, she's just like caked in dirt. Like yeah. that was how they described yeah, it. Yeah, she's caked was- in dirt. She's fucking ugly as shit. <laughs> ugly as <laughs> in shit. In her own words. Well, non weight. <laughs> Disgusting <laughs> Secretary of State, right? So she's getting back uh, to the Capitol mm-hmm. and she's talking. And the next person they introduce is Charles Boynton. Was her oh, yeah. uh, was her chief of staff that was appointed by the president, and the whole thing, like the, one of the the main plot points at the uh-huh. beginning of the story, is that Douglas Williams was her like quote unquote political rival for yes. a long time. They're a part of the same party, but previously Ellen Adams ran a media conglomerate. She used to run a huge, massively successful media company. As they won't shut the fuck up about throughout the entire book. <laughs> Yeah, they'll never shut the fuck up about that and how just amazing she is at everything. Yeah, and apparently she ran, like, some big hit piece on yeah. Douglas Williams, like, all the time because yeah. they're political rivals. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get into why because that has to do with, like, her son and that whole storyline. <laughs> uh, but basically, the storyline is Douglas Williams hates her, right? Yes. He appointed her to Secretary of State in an attempt to embarrass her. We find this out early on in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And that's really about it. Which is not what you do. No. Which is not how that it's position like, works like, at my, all. Because, like, I saw this coming. Like, uh-huh. as soon as, like, because I, I was thinking, like, Oh, if you saw the enemies to lovers arc just yeah. ensue? It, uh, literally instantly, <laughs> because I was thinking, like, there's no reason on the fucking planet that anyone would ever appoint their political rival to the one of the most important positions in their cabinet. Oh, yeah. Like, th- this doesn't happen. No. Th- th- Embarrass them by calling them a dumbass on CNN and move on. Embarrass them by having the media forget about them. Embarrass them by laughing about how they lost. Yeah. Crazy. That's literally all you need to do. There's like, there's no chance anyone, unless of course, unless of course she was just projecting her life experience with Obama, losing to Obama (laughs) 2008, then being appointed as secretary of state. That could be the case. Very well could be. And maybe, maybe this was her like fanficking, uh, her being Joe Biden secretary of state. This entire book is her fanficking, her ideal scenario. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's insane. This Ellen Adams is literally a self insert for Hillary Clinton, and it doesn't get more obvious than when we look at other characters in the book mm-hmm. because almost literally every other fucking major world leader is just a real life world leader right now. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's insane. They talk about um the the prime minister of the UK, yeah. right? It's just Boris and Johnson. The, it's Boris Johnson, one hundred percent. The only defining feature is that his hair is always in a mess. Right there, I. Know New, just dead uh-huh. giveaway and he's like slightly conservative and a bit of an asshole yeah and that's like the least on the nose that these things get mm-hmm. like way later in the book they're talking about the russian president right and she it- mentions <laughs> pictures of him and she says well i have she's trying to blackmail him right and she's like oh i've got these pictures although they don't look as good as those pictures of you shirtless on a horse shut the fuck up uh-huh. shut the fuck it's so on the nose it's painful yeah. and it gets even worse when we start talking about the the 44th president of the united or the 45th president done yeah. The previous administration. Yeah. Done? Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what What was the, <laughs> what thou has done, thou has not done? Oh my God, dude. That was a very popular saying that they had. Uh, it was anyways. a quote that uh, General Whitehead kept using, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, yeah. as the book never lets you forget. So picking up uh, in the State of the Union address, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she is caked in mud, didn't have a chance to change. Her secretary or her her chief of staff is like pissed at her, right? Yeah. Very angry at her that she didn't have time to change. And she goes to the, uh, the State of the Union. And the first like real plot point that we have to deal with is that she's afraid that the media companies are going to treat her poorly in the press because she looks bad, like yeah. looks all muddy and shit. Then at the same time, the, uh, this had me actually laughing. <laughs> They're juxtaposing her dealing with the media in her home country to someone running from like, <laughs> like Oh my god, yeah, no, it's in, insane. In like Pakistan or like, something. The book is going back and forth uh-huh. between these two characters. <laughs> right, the book's gonna be like oscillating between these two scenes of Ellen Adams sitting in, uh, sitting on Capitol Hill, mm-hmm. like getting ready to, I, I don't think she was giving a speech at all, but just like being no, she there, was just there yeah. with the president. Uh, it's switching between that and one, like some Iranian nuclear physicist <laughs> running away from people trying to kill her as if these are the same things or can be compared in any kind of way. Like, even if they were going for a just position, I, by the way it was written, I could tell that she was trying to say, like, Ellen Adams feels the same way that this doctor does running away from people that are trying to kill her. It was just so funny. I just think it's also so funny. That's, like, that's the big drama of Chapter 2 is her at the Secretary of State meeting, or the State of the Union, worried mm-hmm. about how she's going to be perceived. Because, yeah. oh, my God, I just messed up South Korea. But, so, spoiler alert, the media loves it. Mm -hmm. The media thinks, oh my God, look, this is the perfect sign about how she's doing her job perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. They were like, oh my God, look, she's so willing to to even look, get down and dirty for the American uh-huh. people. Like, it's so it's fucking like, It's stupid. like on, on the surface, uh, Ellen Adams maybe has a little bit of like struggle here and there, but throughout the whole entire fucking book, nothing happens to her. And she's the smartest person in every situation. Uh-huh. She figures out these l- literally impossible riddles spoken by characters who only speak in riddles for some <laughs> reason. Because <laughs> that's the only way that Hillary Clinton and Louis Penny know how to fucking write characters from other cultures <laughs> I, I would assume because they have the, non-western they cultures, have the yeah. ayatollah of iran just speaking riddles yeah that was his character wild that's yeah. later though that's yeah. later though uh and then right after the state of the union address right uh she's like celebrating because she's at home with like her her daughter and her like uh, private counselor or whatever or no Betty. Her- Betty, yeah, Betty, yep. what was, uh, her position was like. I have no idea. Just like counsel, like aid. I think basically. so, like, yeah. like she her, would just go, like, aid. exactly. Yeah, uh, which was, um, Catherine, her daughter's godmother. Yes. And by the way, and she gave. And her best friend since, like, kindergarten. Yeah, yeah, they're very close. Yes. Ellen gave her daughter, uh, her media conglomerate, by the way. <laughs> like, just handed it on to Catherine. And Catherine took an oath that 
um, she would never be involved with the reporting on stories about her mother, which is wow. just so unrealistic, wow. so violently unrealistic. <laughs> like it makes me throw up how like th- that's dog shit writing. You know what I mean? This is also when we uh, we first get introduced to one of the most fucking pretentious aspects of the novel. And it's any time um, Ellen and Betty have like communications with each other. Mm-hmm. They always started off with. A mixed metaphor walked into a bar. Yeah. A simile walked into a bar. A fucking other literary device walked into a bar. Yeah, that was their way of warning each other. Ridiculous. The most pretentious, like, thing I've ever seen an author try to give a character. Yeah. Because just give them, like, a twitch. You know what I mean? Just give them, like, a twitch. Uh Uh-huh. You can just do that. Just be generic. Make them disabled somehow. Exactly. That's how, like, you build (laughs) characters by, like, giving them something to come over or just giving them something to overcome. Not making them the smartest person in every Ellen does not overcome anything in this fucking <laughs> um, and I want to note, like during the the State of the Union address, it was constantly like just this grandiose pandering to like th- this idea of a perfect America. Mm-hmm. Like they literally said at one point, the greatness of America should come before partisanship. Oh yeah, Ellen, they do the speech thing. Ellen's like sitting in the State of the Union, like wow, look at look at this building, oh, look I have at the these quote. walls, look at how great this place is. It's so annoying. It's fucking insane. They said. For a second, it made her set aside their differences and think about this time of rebuilding, and she was inspired. She was swept up in the majesty and symbolism of the event. The speech pushed her distrust and suspicions away, leaving only pride and amazement that somehow life had brought her here and put her in this position to serve. That is so funny. It's like it's Veep without any of the humor. (laughs) Because, like, the whole thing is, like, Veep is making fun of our political structures because they clearly do not work as intended. Nobody's actually serious (laughs) actors in these institutions. But it's like Veep, but like take all the humor away from it and take all of its self awareness away. It's, it's like Veep, take all the st- humor and self awareness away, and it's like an Aaron Sorkin political drama, but take away all of the snappy dialogue. Yeah. But they really tried to give it snappy dialogue that just falls flat. Does not work at all. Uh, then I think is the next scene with Anahita, and like uh, she's I think learning. So, so uh, the next part is um, actually I think it cuts to like a semi sex scene, which I was just baffled about. That shit was fucking wild because um, out of nowhere. So they introduce this character Anahita, which we later learn uh, learn is a uh, FSO for the, the Pakistan, Pakistan desk, desk in the Department of State. So works underneath Ellen Adams, mm-hmm. like pretty far down. Oh yeah, like she's, she's a pretty a junior junior employee. level. Um, but we like we we switch over to her, and I think. I don't know if it starts off as like her in her office or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but she's like thinking about this dude named Gil, which we'll get, <laughs> we, which you go on to learn is Ellen's son. Yeah. All these characters are so weirdly connected. And it, the, <laughs> it makes me laugh because Anahita is uh, from Pakistan. No, the she's from only, Iran. The only brown main character. Yeah. She was the only brown main character. But it makes me laugh because uh, every brown character either gets arrested at some point or is overly sexualized or is just both. And I think like, every brown character is a terrorist yeah. or connected to a terrorist, as uh-huh. we later learn that Anahita is, like, somehow. Yeah, because they were doing a thing with Anahita's character at first where they're like, um, she immigrated from Pakistan, I think it was Pakistan, to yeah, America and like was that. just, like, making her way. She's never never been dishonest, was very truthful throughout mm-hmm. all, of entri- all of elementary school, knew Catherine in ele- uh, middle school. Exactly. And, like, just, you know, good stand-up American, been here for a long time. Trying to support and serve the state, uh-huh. you know, serve the country. Uh-huh. I want to serve no. my country. They eventually just connect her to a terrorist, and they, like they literally, they eventually fucking connect her to like the number one nuclear scientist in Iran. And every three chapters, she's just thinking about like fucking Gil. Oh, every three <laughs> chapters, like there's that one point where she's thinking about Gil, and she's like, "His hands know my body better than I know myself." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, smut. Like, it's fucking <laughs> smut. <laughs> Like, I'm just in the gym listening to this, right? <laughs> and I just got off the heels of the State of the Union address, and I'm like, so unrealistic. And yeah. then it cuts to Anahita just, like, thinking about sex. Just, um, and I'm just, like, I want Gil to fucking <laughs> rail me. <laughs> anyway, Anahita becomes important because a little bit later on, uh, there's some bombs that start going off in major cities in the world. Yes. The, the I first, think the first one's in Frankfurt. No, the first or one's this, in London. Yes, first one's in London. First one's in London. One's in Frankfurt. It kills, like, 20-something people. Really big bomb that happened on yep. a bus, right? The next one happens in Paris, I think. I thought Paris was the third one. Frankfurt comes last because Gil was in that one. Oh, that's so right. That's Paris right. happens. So, like, the first bombing happens. Everyone's scrambling, trying to figure out what happens. Uh-huh. The next one goes off shortly after. Again, everyone's freaking yeah, out, trying wild. to figure out what happens. Anahita is sitting at her desk, right? Mm-hmm. At her mm-hmm. FSO desk. Junior level employee, you know, just chilling. Yes. And she gets an email. No, I think at the beginning of the book, she got the email. Oh, okay. And it was a, it was like the chapter three. 
and she was a string of random letters and numbers. Obviously, that's going to fucking mean something because we're reading a book, right? Yeah, yeah. So immediately, we're a little frustrated. And she's like, oh, let me just write this down and then delete it because I think it's spam. Yeah. She talks to her supervisor. Her supervisor says, just fucking delete it. But she writes it down anyway, which is sus, understandably yeah. pretty sus. And then later on, they're in the situation room talking about like, oh, my God, is there going to be another bombing? What's happening? In the situation room on like the sixth level of one of these super secure government buildings covered with armed guards. Yeah. And she thinks... She's Anahita just starts looking at the numbers. She's like, wait a minute. These are the dates and times of yeah. all the attacks. I got to get this up there. Yeah, because right before that, uh, well, the Paris bomb goes off. So that's two now. Mm -hmm. And she she puts together that it is the bus numbers and the times at which yes. the bombs were detonated. And she's like, oh, my God, the next one is like, uh, I think it, I can't I even remember the numbers. It's it was 17 like, or 13 or something It was like bus like 119 yeah. so, and then like 1600 or something like that. Yep. Or that might have been the one that was later on. But anyway, it has the time <laughs> in the bus. They don't know where. They don't know uh, specifically, like, who is going to be anything like that. They just know the time, and they know the bus number. Yes. Um, so Anahita, like, realizes this, and is like, oh, my God, I got to go talk to people. <laughs> so she rushes up to Mahogany Row after being told no, like, several times by different people. Oh, yeah. And then she stops to admire she, she, like, Mahogany she Row. She fucking, she sneaks up there. She, like, somehow gets her way into there, gets up to the sixth floor called Mahogany Row. Yeah. And she just fucking stops. Like, while she's in the middle of trying to stop bombs from going off in a city and killing innocent people, she stops. Right. And she just starts describing, wow, Mahogany Row, this really is just so majestic. There's so many things that go on. I just, yeah, and it's the, so beautiful what it means. The thing about the times, it was, it was going to be like, if it had been in the U.S., it'd be like eight hours until the bomb went off. But if it had oh, been in Europe, it was yeah. like two hours yeah, left. Yeah, they right? fucked up the time zones. Right. They fucked up the time zones. So, like, she had to rush, uh -huh. you know, because there was another bomb that was going to go off pretty soon, and she had the bus number. So when she's rushing up to Mahogany Road to get into this, like, cabinet meeting or whatever, which, by the way, the president of the United States is in. Yeah. So I don't know why anyone would be able to rush in. Absolutely but she not. just stops to, like, admire uh -huh. Mahogany Road. Like, yeah. that's, it's so annoying. It's so liberal. It's so pretentious. Yeah. It, it completely ruins, like, the pace of the chapter. Because this is before the book got, like, bad. Uh -huh. Like, at this point, I, every once in a while, I thought, yeah, you know what? This would make, like, a pretty decent movie. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, you take out all the pretentious, like, monologues and the pretentious descriptions of Mahogany Row and shit, and this would make, like, an all right kind of thriller movie like a b movie like white uh -huh. house down olympus has right. fallen one of those yeah but no all, all of those parts i think were just louise penny because i know she's already like a celebrated author yeah, yeah. I mean, like she's already got a bunch of books out um all of like the good drama bits i feel like yeah could just be a tv gotta show everything else is hillary and then Clinton. hillary clinton's like yeah but mahogany row though and bro every time every time they reference somebody they say their full title and name Every single Ellen time. Ellen Adams, the American Secretary of State. I need to get to the Joint Chiefs of Staff for a General Whitehead. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody get the Joint Chiefs of Staff on the line. Someone get the Joint Chiefs of Staff. <laughs> Someone get the Deputy National Security Director on the they, line. This is also where they start saying, like, every other chapter, wow, we're really in a state of terror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Anahita runs into this cabinet meeting, yep. right? All of the, uh, quote, brightest minds in Mahogany Row. Oh, all there. my God. Bro. And Anahita runs in, and she's, like, saying that she knows where the next bombs are going to be detonated. Or she doesn't even say she that. Does, no. She fucking, she gets in. She, like, sees, like, her, like, boss, because she's such a junior level employee. It's yeah. a dude, like, two steps under Ellen, right? So he's in there, and he stops her, and he's like, whoa, 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 now. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get back downstairs. You shouldn't be in here at all. And she's like, oh, but I have this note. Please, this just needs to get to Ellen. Please, just get this to Ellen. And then they, he takes it from her. He's like, okay, whatever. And then she's all no, anxious what, about how he's not going to he understand sees, it. It's just the same thing as the email he saw before. Yeah, and he's like, didn't she, you delete this? And like, she was like, read it, please. No, but it's a, explain. <laughs> yeah. Use your words, please. The, the narrator literally described how um, Anahita was going to say it, but then didn't because she got too nervous. Like, fuck, dude, <laughs> come on. It's a terrorist attack. You got to speak up. <laughs> please, you could. These are the letters, and this is these are the fucking numbers. These are the times that this bomb is going to go off. It's going to go off in like 30 minutes uh -huh. or some shit. Like, that's what it was. Uh huh. Oh, my God, bro. And then um, I think eventually they figure it out, right? Like, uh, or Anahita explains it to them or something like that. I think they figure it out, like, two fucking minutes before the bomb goes off. Yeah. But while they're in the situation room, they start fucking talking, and Ellen's, again, monologuing inside oh, her head. right, right, right. About the previous administration. She's like, God, the previous administration, his cabinet was so toxically masculine, and, but this one, something's different about this one. <laughs> this room is now filled with the best and brightest oh, minds yeah. in economics, finance, uh, 
fucking politics yeah. and everything. This couldn't ever be like that. Uh huh. Yeah, because liberal is, men can't be toxic. This is also the point where she starts blaming everything on the previous administration. Every single the previous thing. administration ruined everything for us. They destroyed everything we uh -huh. had, and then she also starts blaming everything on the media too. Like the media <laughs> portrays us poorly. What are we gonna do? Like it's just the it's literally just Hillary Clinton. That's every all her. single fucking issue goes back to the previous administration. They left us like in just they left us disheveled. They they cut ties with all our allies, even though I just fucked up with South Korea. It was the previous administration <laughs> that cut ties with all of our allies, and nobody respects us anymore. Yeah. And then she'll be she'll be in a meeting with like a task force of a couple countries that they like assembled to talk about these bombs. Mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. Australia, the UK, Germany, shit like that. And everyone will mention, well, after the previous administration, it's kind of hard to trust the united states and he's like but we're a different administration guys come on yeah. we can do it we can do it right this time like usually when books like uh fiction books yeah write about history and like say you know like when george orwell is critiquing like the ussr for example yes they don't just directly include real people in their books oh my god i know like, and, and because <laughs> the the first notion that i got that the previous administration was just donald trump was she says that he backed out of the jcpoa which was the yep. iranian nuclear deal and then she also says that he had a messy uh he set up the withdrawal from afghanistan without a plan but it was yeah without a plan but it was really messy and the next administration had to take it on just like joe biden had to take uh -huh. on trump's withdrawal from afghanistan and his so name is know. and his name is dunn yep uh, and then later, later on in the book, you find out he lives in Florida yep. in a mansion. Palm Beach. He's rich. He's a fucking idiot. Uh -huh. It's it's insane. It's yeah. just it would the whole entire book would have been less pretentious had they just called it historical fiction and used real names. Yeah. Like, yep. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Uh, so then they they figure out uh, what Anahita's note meant. Right. Yeah. And they're freaking out. And then I think somehow Gil gets roped into it. Like, I think at some point the book starts following Gil's story. Yes. Because uh, Gil's a reporter and he's tracking the person that was running away from, um, the doctor that was running away from people that are trying to kill her. In in chapter two, when that thing is juxtaposed yeah. with Ellen Adams, yeah. Gil is following that person to try to get info yeah. on, like, a lead he has. Because Gil is, like, a guerrilla journalist, like, yeah. an undercover journalist. He's doing a, he'll do whatever he can to get the story out there as his dad drilled into him when he was younger. That's right. Before he was fucking murdered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Gil's on this bus with this doctor that he's trying to track because, and the doctor was was the um the nuclear physicist that he's trying yes, to like track yes. down so he's on this bus and they figure out that uh the bus that he's on is the same one that's about to be blown mm -hmm. up uh because it's between it's between 119 in uh the frankfurt bus that he's in yeah. and bus 119 in some other city some right? other unimportant city because there's no important characters so there. <laughs> ellen just makes the correct guess that it's 119 <laughs> because of course it is right <laughs> And so, you know, you have the suspicious guy gets on the bus with the bomb. Gil's, like, not answering phone calls from his mother because they have, like, a bad relationship or something. Yeah. And then Anahita calls Gil, and, of course, they had a previous mm -hmm, relationship, mm -hmm. so he picks up. And then um, Ellen takes the phone and is like, Gil, get off the bus right now. There's Gil, a bomb. Gil, there's a fucking bomb. Please go. And at this point, they have, like, like 50 seconds left. Yeah. And, you know, Gil starts freaking out, and he jumps off, or he doesn't even jump off the bus. He's trying to get people off the bus. Uh -huh. And he tries to get the physicists off the bus, too, so he can follow his lead. Yep. Um, but then eventually the driver just tosses him out. The bus goes away fast enough. Then it blows up, and Gil doesn't die, but he's hurt. Exactly. He's like ends up in the hospital. He wakes up after a few days. Yeah. And this is the point at which I had no idea where Ellen was in the world. <laughs> because they had her flipping back and forth between like Frankfurt, Germany, going to places in the Middle East, going to the United States, like yeah. so many times. Like, I, I think no it's, idea. it's right after this is when she flies to Frankfurt, and then she like goes between Frankfurt and the U.S. like the in the span of a phone call. Yeah, she'll just be in the United States somehow. I have no idea how time works in here. Yeah, I also want to point out there's a really interesting line about like the prospect of maybe a terrorist attack could mm -hmm. be in the U.S. where Anahita. The only brown, like, main character in this entire book says she can't believe these, quote, these, she can't believe the terrorist attacks could happen in a civilized country. <laughs> As if 9-11 didn't fucking happen. Mm -hmm. What? The only Muslim character. You're yeah. going to give her that line? Yeah. And then... <laughs> At this point, um, they start following a lead that there's like a traitor in the White House. Yes. Um, and there's a couple of suspects, but the first one, the main one for a while, is this guy named Tim Beecham, Tim right? Tim Beecham. And Ellen sends Betsy, her like personal aid person, her best friend, to go investigate Tim Beecham. Mm -hmm. And the first place Betsy goes is to meet up with, uh, actually, first she's being followed. True. So they, went, they all went to Frankfurt, and Ellen sent Betsy back on her own. 
uh, back to the United States. And Betsy starts being followed by this person. So she calls General Whitehead because they think they can trust him at this point. Yeah. So they call General Whitehead. She meets up with him. General Whitehead gets this dude to go away. General Whitehead's the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He's General Whitehead, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And he's yeah. just the most... He's the most stereotypical fucking, like, general. old, wise general character. Yeah. Like, he he speaks in quotes from literary, like, sources, you know what I mean? His wife is, like, a literature professor. Yeah. So he's always dropping these crazy quotes from literary fiction. And then uh, General Whitehead starts talking to Betsy and just straight up revealing state secrets. Uh-huh. Like, because General Whitehead's been doing an investigation into what's going on with these bombings. And he has suspicions that it, the planning goes farther back, right? Oh, yeah. And he suspects this dude named Bashir Shaw. Right. Yes. Bashir Shaw is going to become like the main villain. The guy who is like orchestrating all this, he's an arms dealer. Uh, he's, he's a Pakistani yeah. arms dealer. He's responsible for like all the bad things every terrorist organization has ever done. Right. And Ellen Adams Media Company apparently aired like a documentary exposing so many things about him that they were able to find out, right? <laughs> and that documentary is like the reason that he got mad and fucking went and killed a bunch of people. And one of those people included her husband. Yeah. I think like that, that's, first husband. that's the gist of it. Yeah. Gil's father. Gil's and then father. Catherine has a different father. Exactly. That's like the general gist of that. But apparently he's been on house arrest and he was never actually locked up by the Pakistani government. Mm-hmm. And so he sends her a card like every fucking year on her birthday or something and just like come on dog the corniest shit come on um, also but then uh, bef- what were you gonna get into i was gonna talk about we we skipped over there when they're uh, describing islamabad oh in yeah. Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah they describe this country like it is a fucking the the most the, it's a caricature of the most evil just generic fucking radical country ever yeah it is insane they mentioned that it's just it's dirty there's crime literally everywhere like <laughs> yeah. come the fuck on dude mm-hmm. aren't you aren't you hillary clinton the person like the type of people the liberals who were shitting on donald trump for calling all these countries shithole countries yeah which he shouldn't have done because like that's not what you that's do that's racist and then you go and do the same thing in your book yeah like it's in the narrator's voice too it's not even in a character's voice yeah it, it, that's you. Most of the times when they're in a country in the Middle East, they're just talking about how fucking terrible it is. Every single like time. There, there was one time where they were in Tehran and they were talking like for a brief moment how beautiful it was. Uh-huh. But she was just saying that before she went into the um, the talk with the Ayatollah. Yes. Like, or right, with the, some dude before the Ayatollah. Yeah, and then the Ayatollah like just yeah. like waltzed in or something because yeah. he really wanted to see Ellen Adams, the American Secretary of State. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> anyway, back to this scene with Betsy and General Whitehead, right? Okay, okay. So they're at this restaurant. They wanted to meet at a public place. And General Whitehead starts revealing state secrets, right? Of course. He said he's been tracking this story for a while, trying to figure out what's going on. And he thinks there's, like, some people inside the White House that are, you know, fucking with stuff, Mm -hmm. ruining everything. And he basically just goes on to describe QAnon. Yeah. And he talks about, you know, how right-wingers, typical conservatives are being radicalized to believe the country's being taken away from them. And they've started working with terrorists overseas Mm -hmm. at the behest of the former administration. That's right. uh, And they're planning, like, attacks on American soil. They're Crazy. trying to find ways to retake their country. He just let this go to Betsy. Yeah. Just the yeah, random just, aid for the Secretary of State. He let it fly. Yeah. And, and the thought that General Whitehead has is that there's somebody like close to the president that is orchestrating all of this, mm-hmm. but he doesn't know who yet. Um, and Betsy was sent back to investigate Tim Beecham, uh, which is kind of like a side plot, to be honest, but it eventually culminates in everything exactly, else. Exactly. Exactly. It all connects somehow. Yeah. yeah. Um, like a spider's then, web. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, and then I'm trying to think what happened right after that. Um, That's like around like chapter like 16 and shit, right? Mm -hmm, Or like mm -hmm. around there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have no fucking, I know there's the shit with Betsy, like trying to get into the computer and she's talking with, uh, who's the chick? Yeah. So Betsy, Betsy goes back to, um, uh, Ellen's office. Ellen's in Germany at this point. Yeah. I think still visiting with Gil because she's trying to like get information about him. Right. And, And speaking with, I think she meets with, um, Various people in Germany. Exactly, at she some meets point. with like the prime minister. Shit There's like also that. a side plot of like some German police going to check on the house of the bomber because the bomber jumped off the bus. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh huh. The house of the bomber of the Frankfurt bus, and then all of them die because like someone from Shaw's crew pulls up and kills them all. Oh yeah, is this when they start to get the suspicion that maybe the bomber was supposed to die but he didn't, and now yep. we need to start tracking him? Yeah, and then he got murked. Exactly, uh, and, and so did killed. so did some like U.S. officials, by the way, not oh, like yeah. po- politicians, but like people that were in you know pretty important positions of power. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They just get fucking dropped. 
crazy. Um, and then there's a, I think this is when we start to get in like around chapter 20, right? Where uh, Ellen sends Betsy, her fucking aide, to go meet up with the former, uh, what's his name? Press secretary. His former press secretary. Yep. And in the lead up is so fucking funny because Betsy is like describing from her point of view what she thinks his apartment is going to be like, right? Because apparently he's this he's this alcoholic. He's always spending time at the yeah, local bars. Yeah, because he had been uh, fired. He'd lost a job in shame before. Yes. Because um, the previous administration fired him after after like a year in uh-huh. because he was found laughing with some re- like liberal reporters. Yeah. He was, was joking it. with liberal reporters and that was enough for Dunn to just get him right off of there mm-hmm. because Dunn no wanted more. to make an example. out of Cause it him. was, he wasn't showing loyalty. Yeah. And as every single character will tell you, loyalty was put above all else in mm-hmm. Dunn's administration. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Betsy's like, it's getting to the lead up to his apartment. She's like, I bet it's going to be so fucking disgusting. It's going to smell like pew and piss, puke and piss and shit. Just no matter what. And then she opens the door surprised he's baking cookies and he just took a shower and he looks clean he just took a shower his apartment is clean and he just made cookies and he offered her some spoiler alert he's literally a lincoln project conservative yeah that's his role (laughs) in this book because like at every fucking opportunity he reminds everyone well i'm still a conservative exactly i still don't mess with any of your liberal agendas i just don't like dunn and what that wing of the party is doing and at first he was like (laughs) i truly believed in the dunn administration (laughs) And then he starts talking about how he's writing a book to expose the Dunn administration. It's literally fucking, oh, what was dude's name that wrote The Room Where It Happens? Uh, I can't remember. J- uh, Jim Bolton, something like that? James John Bolton? John Bolton. Yeah, That's who it was. He wrote that. It's literally him. <laughs> the room Even though John Bolton's a fucking war criminal. <laughs> Such a liberal title. Yeah. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. It's just, the book is, it's beyond parody. Mm-hmm. Almost, one could mm-hmm. say. And um, so so El- Betsy goes and does that, brings Pete Hamilton the former press secretary of yes. the previous administration back to the uh, to a- Ellen's office, right? Yep. So they go back to Ellen's office because she needs Pete to look into Tim Beecham's files because Betsy doesn't have the clearance for that. Or she has the clearance for it because she's using um, Charles Boynton's, the chief of staff's computer because she mm-hmm. doesn't want to get traced back to her. But she doesn't know like what to look for. Yeah. So she wants someone from the former administration to do it. <laughs> so Peter Hamilton starts doing that. And then we cut back to um, Ellen, right? And Ellen's in, like, a multitude of fucking press conferences with people from, like, France, Germany, Canada, New Zealand, etc. Mm-hmm. And they're all meeting and talking about, like, what's going on because they're allies. It's there's like several the five of these meetings. or some shit like that. There's, there's several of these meetings that the I, worst. I just didn't follow. I lost track. Yeah. They're all just saying the same thing. Eventually, they find out that the plan was to attack these physicists and put nuclear bombs in U.S. cities. Yep. And that's kind of like the, the the big plot point of the second half of the book. I, I swear to God, it's like, I want to say like the third quarter of this book is dedicated to them just fucking like doing all of these like international meetings that I'm, I'm losing track of yeah. just to come to the conclusion that, oh my God, wait a minute, the Pakistanis actually released Bashir Shah, but wait a minute, Dunn released Bashir Shah? General Whitehead, the Joint Chief of Staff, did you know anything about this? No, Betsy, or no, Ellen, I actually didn't know anything about this, but he actually did know things about this, which I don't understand why he hid from her. Yeah. Like, he, that, it's so interesting, because they're always talking about Bashir Shah. Bashir Shah is always in the background for, like, the first third until eventually he comes up, and he's the the main, most prominent antagonist throughout Mm -hmm. And her relationship, she gets close with General Whitehead, only to then find out through Pete Hamilton's digging that he might be the traitor. Yeah. Because they went to, like, interview his wife, and some quotes he had suspiciously said makes them think that he's the And General Whitehead had signed off, had had his signature on the um, release of Bashir Shah. Exactly. But he lied to Ellen about it. Yeah. Although in the end of the book, you find out that he wasn't the fucking traitor. Yeah. And it was actually the dude that they were looking at, uh, Tim Beecham. The yep. entire fucking time. Yeah, because uh, eventually General Whitehead gets called into the president's office. Tim Beecham is there, and Ellen also somehow gets back to the United States. <laughs> yeah, this is right before I, th- right before she goes to Pakistan, I think. Okay, yeah, uh, to meet with like their prime minister. And it stuff. was that's when he got arrested. Yeah, so um, General Whitehead's there. Ellen is there. The president's there. Tim Beecham is there. Maybe maybe a couple other people. Yeah. Maybe Barb, which is the president's chief of staff. Barb Stinhouse. Oh, true. She's, she's also an like character. awful. Yeah. She, she'll just be in there. She's just there to like kind of annoy Betsy. Yeah. So they're all in there. And I don't even remember how this conversation went, but eventually they find out it's General Whitehead. Yes. Or they find, quote unquote, find out. They discover that they think it's General Whitehead. Because they went to like meet with his wife to talk mm-hmm. about, is that before he got arrested? 
or at, no, that's before because mm-hmm. that's how they found out that he knew that he signed off on Bashir Shaw being released, which yeah. surprised the Dunn administration incompetently released him. Oh my right. God. How did they just sign off on releasing this international terrorist? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And that's when they start to suspect that uh, Dunn has something to do with these bombings too. Yes. Like that's why they start to suspect yes. that there's like some Americans that are plotting with terrorists <laughs> to take back America or whatever it is. But at this point uh, they suspect Whitehead. Whitehead beats the shit out of Tim Beecham. They start trusting Tim Beecham again. And Whitehead gets hauled off to interrogation or whatever. Which is so funny. He he went and he just started, he just decked Tim Beecham. He yeah. starts beating the fuck out of him. Yeah. And then later on in the book, when you find out that Tim Beecham was the traitor and it wasn't General Whitehead, General Whitehead says, yeah, that's why I went to punch Tim because I knew, Ellen, I knew that you would be able to figure it out. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't need to say anything to clear, but I didn't use any of the facts you found out to clear my own name. I just punched him because, Ellen, I knew that you would get it. Uh-huh. I knew you'd figure it out. I didn't just explain it here and now. Exactly. Know, like. we, we did, oh my, the ending of the book is just, it's fucking insane. Yeah. And then, okay, so they also found out where the IP address of the message that went to Anahita came from. Yes. Um, And they find out that it's in Pakistan, and they narrowed it down to... I think they eventually find out they narrow it down to uh, the computer of Anahita's uncle, cousin. her uncle that she didn't know she had. But they later find out that it was her cousin that sent the message from her uncle's computer yes. in Pakistan because or as, in Iran. as you Iran. I don't fucking know. I can't remember I, this. The, I'm sorry, but the last third of the book is honestly such a fucking blur. Uh-huh. So much is happening and it's all so bad. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's not good. I was I wasn't like slightly entertained anymore. Mm-hmm. My hate couldn't keep me going. And like. Keep in mind, I hate watch the whole 10 hours of the Cowboy Bebop net- Netflix live action uh-huh. show. And I could get through it and kind of enjoy it. But this shit, it was just bad. Yeah. It wasn't even like so bad it's good at this point anymore. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was not good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't express how much I disliked it. Anyway, they find out that the, um, I think the computer signal or the message came from a computer with an IP address in Pakistan, I think. Right, because they were they were always low-key suspecting Anahita because she's the only brown woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and th- there's another point where they're trying to, like, match the faces Wait. of the bomber that hopped off the Frankfurt bus and didn't kill himself, right? Mm-hmm. And <laughs> they're trying to narrow down the suspects. And one person goes, it's got to be this guy. And I think Ellen says, but isn't that just racially profiling? And then the other guy goes, yeah, but, like, he's Muslim, though. Yeah. Yeah. No, literally. And then there's several scenes where Anahita gets interrogated, right? Yes. And her whole plot point or her whole, like, character arc in this moment is that she initially says her father is from – I think she said her father is from Pakistan. No. Initially, when she's getting interrogated earlier in the book for, like, n- giving them the piece of paper, like, why did you delete it and write it down and do all that, uh, Ellen comes in and saves her because she had a fucking hunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I but, can, yeah. bro. And then they find out, or, or she she was telling them, and what's on her um, immigration papers mm-hmm. is that her father was from Pakistan and her mother was like half American or something like that. Yeah. So she gets into America and, you know, is working for the State Department, et cetera. But what actually happened was that she forged her immigration documents and her father's actually from Iran. Yeah. And her father fought in the Iranian revolution, uh-huh. which in the eyes of the State Department makes him like a terrorist. Oh, basically. absolutely. So then she's like suspect number one for like. And wasn't he like a huge nuclear physicist or was that his uncle? Uh, I think that was the uncle. Yeah, his uncle was like the top nuclear physicist. And then like he left because he's like, actually, this is bad. I can't do this. I'm going to ignore all the reasons why Iran as a country wants these nukes because of all the bad things America's done to them. And I'm going to go to America. Yeah. Because that's the land of the free home of the brave. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then eventually Anahita's mom and dad get arrested. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, and th- so they're basically hauled off to jail and Anahita's also like kept in detainment Yeah, uh, because they, you know, brown woman scary. They exactly, expect exactly. her to be in the terrorists. And at this point, I think they're going to Pakistan. Um, eventually Anahita gets hauled off with them. And for some reason, Catherine comes too. <laughs> but the, the crew is, uh, I think Betsy stays in America to, uh, for a little while to continue investigating. She's Tim doing Beecham things with like Tim Beecham and yeah. Pete Hamilton and shit like that. And, uh, Ellen takes Catherine, her chief of staff, uh, Boyton and she takes uh, Anahita with her yep. to Pakistan for some fucking reason. I can understand bringing Anahita because she, you know, speaks Farsi, That's so true. she can understand some of the languages. Um, but she wants to make sure that they're not saying anything right. like behind her back. And yep. her chief of staff is her employee, but like her daughter, like because <laughs> fun family. She, she's just the head of a media conglomerate, right? right. Like it's it's Love so dumb. It. And oh yeah, Gil's out of the hospital. Yeah, at this he point. he escapes. 
yeah, he escapes the hospital and she's like, what? And it's like, he's an adult. He can sign himself out once he's better. And it's like, oh my God, what the fuck? Well, he signed himself out and took $200 from a nurse yeah. <laughs> to get himself transportation into, pa- or is it Iran? Or I think he goes to Iran because eventually they find him. Yes. I Cause that's Iran. when the, the, like a bunch of the characters meet up. Yeah. Yeah. He goes to Iran while his mom is in Pakistan meeting with like the prime minister or some shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But with the whole, the Gil stuff is just absolutely wild because Crazy. there's, there's a big point of contention throughout the whole book about uh Gil's backstory and why I still don't understand why their relationship is strained. I don't know either. I, I think like apparently Gil, like a couple years ago had been captured by, uh, Radicals, like yeah. terror, like some ISIS beheading type shit. Right. And every single person in the group that was captured for like three months was beheaded except for Gil. Yeah. So there's like drama with like and, and the reason Ellen hated uh, Douglas Williams so much is because Senator Williams, then Senator for Williams, yes. not president, uh, refused to negotiate for his release. Yes. So that's why you can't hated negotiate Williams with so terrorists. Yeah. You know, I love yeah. George W. Bush. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then, so Gil is able to escape because he uh, had, like, a friend or somebody that helped him out. Yeah, he he became friends with the guy who would, like, bring him food. And then after he converted to Islam, and I love how that's just, before we knew, like, all that stuff, the only, like, thing we know about Gil is that he converted to Islam, like, mm-hmm. a while ago. Which makes and him we're, inherently bad, we're of immediately supposed to assume that, oh, my God, he might be a suspect <laughs> for these bombings. <laughs> Because he is a suspect for a while. <laughs> because he converted to Islam with this group. I love it so much, bro. Yeah, yeah. I love also, it so much. Also, side note, <laughs> the accents that the narrator would put on while reading the dialogue Holy for shit, for the audio book was fucking disgusting. I think the woman who's reading it's like Joan something, old white woman, puts on a Pakistani accent, uh-huh. puts on an Iraqi accent, will put on a British accent, and they're all bad. Mm-hmm. They're all just bad. Yeah. I would have rather just not, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't even really remember what happens in Pakistan, to be honest with you, but and eventually do I. it leads her to Iran and meeting with the prime minister or the president of Iran. Yes. Um, because for, I, I don't know, some reason. Yeah. I honestly cannot remember a single thing that came out of the Pakistan meeting. Yeah. I think she was just talking about, oh my God, how could you release Bashir Shah? Yeah. Or did she go back to Pakistan? What do you mean go back? Did she go back after Iran Fucking to maybe. go meet with him? For the dinner? Yeah. The dinner scene? Yeah, that- I think she did. I think that was after. Oh, fuck. What the fuck did they talk about in Pakistan? No, I think it was, why did you release Bashir Shah? I that's think, just I what it that's was? that's what it was. And then uh, that oh, leads her to Oh, and Iran. then he's like, we didn't release Bashir Shah. Your president mm-hmm. is the one who told mm-hmm. us that we could release Bashir Shah. And she's like, oh my God, what? And then for some reason, she goes to Iran. Yeah, she goes to Iran to talk to the president. Um, oh, no, she goes to Iran because of Anahita's family. The, yeah, and they because they were so high up. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, we need to investigate this. They find and out. And then the, the like Iranian oh. president is like, your father is actually like a ward of the state. Right. Like he's going to be executed or some shit like right. that. Right. And like, at, at that point, they find out that Sahara, which is Anahita's cousin, yes. was actually the one that sent the message from uh, Anahita's uncle's computer. She leaked that they, they were going to be these bombings. Right. Yeah. Because she says like, she's like, of course it was Iran that did it. She says she's fully committed to stopping these physicists, but um, Allah would not have uh, understood <laughs> the need to kill innocents. Oh my God. And then there's a point where Ellen starts lecturing them about Allah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Ellen says inshallah like many times. Oh my, she's like, well, may Allah be with you. Yeah. (laughs) And then I was watching it on double speed. Obviously, there's no Uh way I'm sitting there for 18 hours. And I just thought it was funny, the double speed voice. She'd be like, may Allah be with you. (laughs) (laughs) And then at one point, uh, before they go into the meeting with the president of Iran, I think they have Sahara do like some kind of mission for them. Yeah. Trying to get some information or something. And doesn't she get captured? And then Sahara gets fucking oh arrested my God. for being a traitor of the state. And then they straight up say that they're going to execute her. Yeah, then they say they're going to kill her. And then they go to Iran and they meet up with the president. Yep. Right. And uh, Anahita's in tow. And then so is Charles Boyden. Oh, and, and they Catherine. all have full burqas on. Yes. <laughs> I, th- I think that's just, isn't that just required of like diplomats? I think it's like a respect it thing. might. I don't know. I just thought it was funny imagining Ellen Adams just in a burqa. Yeah. It, just, it seems bad. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> imagining Hillary Clinton in a burqa. Exactly. So, no, they explicitly mentioned that not everyone is wearing burqas. They just did it just because. <laughs> Maybe it was a respect thing. I don't know, though. Yeah. So they go up to meet with the president of Iran, uh, and the president of Iran is basically, like, giving her nothing. Yep. And then walks in the Grand Ayatollah, 
crazy. The supreme leader of Iran. Crazy. And bro walks in, starts speaking in fucking riddles. That's it. Because she can't write a foreign character. Uh-huh. It's just insane. Just dude only speaks in riddles. And later we find out that maybe it's because Russian Russia has bugged the room. Yeah. And it's been bugged for like 30 years. But the Ayatollah and the president of Iran never did anything about <laughs> yeah. that. Because they're incompetent somehow. Well, I, and I think they were also like like being monitored or just like controlled by the Russian mafia. But I think yeah. that was kind of like a side point. But we do find out here. Oh. One thing he does tell us is that it was Iran that bombed those buses. Yeah. And they bombed them because the physicists on board were working for Bashir Shah. Yep. And Bashir Shah was trying to build nuclear weapons to drop nuclear bombs yeah, on places. Yeah, do terrorism. But the thing was is that Bashir Shah, he pulled an uno reverse. Uh-huh. And the people on the bus were actually fake physicists oh. because he knew somehow oh. that Iran was going to go after him. So he put fake physicists on the bus, and he still had his real physicists, which is what had allowed him no, to build they, nukes. No, they weren't even fake physicists. They were, like, top physicists, but not the top yeah, physicists. Yeah. Actually, he had the best, best physicists yeah, yeah. in, like, a secret warehouse in Pakistan that he was using to build yeah. these dirty bombs. Yeah, so he was still making the dirty bombs. And I don't think they knew the bombs were going to be in the U.S. at this point, uh-huh. but they ju- they still knew that the bombs were, like, in, in production. Exactly. Right? They're like, oh, my God, where are these going to go? They might go to the U.S. Yeah, and then the Ayatollah is, like, clearly, because the room is bugged and been, has been bugged, for 30 mm-hmm. years they never had an IT guy come in and fix it <laughs> the Ayatollah starts speaking in riddles yep. because he secretly wants Ellen's help uh-huh. and he's relying on her to just understand this riddle about a, a hunter a lion and a mouse uh, American Secretary of State please save me the Grand Ayatollah yeah yeah <laughs> and the riddle was something along the lines of like 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 the the hunter or the lion and the mouse will work together to get away from the hunter or something like that. Uh huh. And then like the mouse stays in hiding or the mouse is like hiding from the lion and the lion is like, hey, we need to work together in order to take down the hunter. Mm-hmm. And then you find out that the through that that the big bad is Russia. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's like yeah, he's just speaking in the riddle and she's the only one that puts two and two together. Yeah. Out of all the characters. Yeah, and eventually, so so after the meeting, they arrest Anahita because Anahita is a traitor to the yep, state. Yep. They arrest Sahara because Sahara is a traitor mm-hmm. to the state. And then Ellen's like, well, fuck, what do we do? And then she just leaves her kid and her chief of staff. She says, oh, my God, great idea. They won't do anything to Anahita if my daughter is with them. Yeah. <laughs> they just, she just left Charles and Catherine in Tehran and is like, go check out the caves. And I, I like how they just gloss over the fact that Iran is the one that did these bombings as yeah. if as if they wouldn't have used that to justify another invasion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, the the. Ellen somehow figures out that yep. um, th- she needs to leave someone behind to go and meet up with, like, Iranian officials that will actually help the Americans figure this yeah. out. So she sends Catherine and Charles to caves that she somehow knew people would be there to intercept them. Uh-huh. Russian mafia would be there to intercept them. Well, first they met up with uh, people that wanted to help and give them oh. – get- I can't remember what information they were getting from this Weren't dude. they trying to pass into Pakistan? Because they were talking to, like, a border security guard. Does Iran border Pakistan? Uh, bro, it's don't I'm not, make I'm another not trying to have another Brussels another bumble, mistake. you know what I'm saying? Uh, just maybe in this world. <laughs> if yeah, it in doesn't, the, it in doesn't the fictional life. world of Hillary Clinton's state of terror where everything else is just a real person. What if she just event? got the geography wrong? That'd be hilarious. It was her, not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, Ellen sends her kid and her chief of staff to these caves to meet up with some Iranian officials to talk about stuff. And then eventually they get attacked by the Russian mafia yep. who just like guns down some of them. Obviously, Charles and um, Catherine survive, but yep. they should. Oh, oh, they were just going to get Anahita. That's what that was. Oh, yep. OK. They, they were trying to free Anahita, but they had to make it look like they were, you know, taking her to jail. Exactly. exactly. So they meet up with Anahita, Sahara, and I think Sahara's dad, the uncle. Can't remember. And the uncle was basically explaining, like, yeah, daughter, I'm sorry. I had to sell you out because I didn't, you know, want to betray the state. Uh I I have to stay, like, in line with what the Ayatollah wants and stuff. Exactly. And then dude gets fucking shot. He's dead. Wild. He gets shot. Charles Boynton kills a man (laughs) and then has a fucking mental (laughs) breakdown. I fucking did it, bro. I did it. I can't believe I did it. He's still alive, right? Because the dude that they were traveling with, uh, this, like, taxi driver or whatever, ends up being, like, an Iranian official. And this dude had a gun, but he gets dropped. Charles picks up the gun and dots somebody. (laughs) Straight killer, my man Charles. Yeah. Um, And then, meanwhile, all of this is happening. Gil is, like, on the verge of death, right? 
Because oh. Gage, or not <laughs> Gage. <laughs> Gage is in there. No, Gil is, uh, he's in Pakistan, I think. Oh, yeah, before. So there's also another layer of Gil. That, there's so much shit that was fucking, there's this so book many was 500 parts. pages. And it, so many fucking is an 18 and a half hour audiobook. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of moving parts. You, you'd you be better off reading a synopsis than relying on us to actually <laughs> yeah. cover a lot of these things. But we're commentators, you right, know right, what right, I mean? Right, right. Uh, there, there's like conflict with Gil because Gil knew some things about these bombings. That's why he was following the nuclear physicist in Frankfurt. Yeah. And uh, his mom and a bunch of uh, officials like the president were pressing him about who the fuck is your son's like confidential informant. And he's like, I can't give it up. Fast forward to now, we learn that his confidential informant is like a member of the Taliban. Yeah. Wild. He's just homies with the member of the uh-huh. Taliban. And the member of the Taliban betrays him. That Does was the he? guy that betrays him, right? No. He saves him and sacrifices himself. No, no, no. What was the... Because he gets into a fight with some dude that he was traveling with. Yeah. I was helping him out. Takes the knife and tries to kill him, right? Dog. I- <laughs> Did you miss that part? No, I explicitly remember that part because he was... Tra- <laughs> he had like robes on and I remember uh-huh. him describing fumbling trying to get the knife out of the robes yeah. while someone was attacking him I thought that was someone else because he's talking to his friend right about how oh my god they're gonna find you like if I ever like accurately report on this information they're gonna know it came from somewhere and it might have came from you and I think one of the other guys in the Taliban found out and he went to attack Gil and then, because I remember the other guy saving him, like, he fell off a fucking cliff, right? Yeah, and they, Gil like, was about to fall off a cliff, yeah. Yeah, and then they exchanged some words about, like, friendship and yeah. shit. So I don't think he'd be trying to, I thought that was somebody else. I don't, no, I think there there was a friend that he was meeting up with that, like, came just at the right time to, like, save him from falling off the cliff. Oh, so he might have saved him from Taliban, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because um, one dude, there was a dude that was trying to kill Gil, is yeah, all you need to yeah. understand. Um, and, and his confidence informant was a member of the Taliban. Yeah, Gil already struggles to walk because yep. he was, you know, he was in the bombing. So, like, he's, he's already pretty hurt. He's pretty tired already. So this dude tries to kill him and is, like, trying mm-hmm. to stab him. Then eventually dude just tries to, like, push him off a cliff. And, you know, Gil, yeah. being, like, partially disabled right now, is trying to claw his way back up. And this dude's trying to push him off. And then he dude just gets shot in the head. Yep. So he's dead. And then his informant from the Taliban shows up to save him. Yeah. So that's all happening with Gil right now. And then after that, Gil heads to, like, the Pakistani border or whatever. Uh, and he's, like, in the caves now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Eventually, Gil meets up with Anahita, uh, his lover, of course. Oh, yeah. And then, and then uh, she talks Catherine about how Charles. his hands know more about her body than she knows herself. Yeah. yeah. God damn. And then this prompts, uh, I think, is this where Ellen finds out that, is this where Ellen goes to visit um, Dunn? No, no, Putin's like towards the end of the book. Oh, yeah, true. This might no, because she she visits. Wait, Dunn at yes, the, she goes the to end, visit Don. There's a plot point around here about how her media company. You, they're talking about how vain Don is, right? Uh-huh. And they're talking about how um, Ellen's media company ran a piece one time about all the bow ties that Don wears, and how he's just these he wears these eccentric bow ties, and which one's your favorite, and shit like that. And they they spend like a couple pages talking about that, to talk about how vain he is, and how like they're gonna use that to get him, and then talk to him about something. Mm-hmm. And then I think this is where they meet up with him. Yeah, yeah, they go to meet up with him to like beg him for information on. Shaw because yep. they find out that like he released Shaw they need more information on him this is also where they find out that Shaw was like in this dude's fucking house uh-huh. like two days before yep. and Shaw had pre like flown out now so Shaw is gone yeah he's free free um, man and this is where I think they find out that the um some of the information that they need is in some warehouse in Pakistan yeah which prompts Ellen to go back to DC talk to the yep. president they arrange a raid of this place a fake raid, a fake raid of this place because yeah. they're they're trying to do some like crazy double jeopardy stuff. Yeah, with, they're like, trying to do a, a diversion. Yeah, there's like a fake raid, and then while that fake raid is going on in Pakistan, which will surely piss off the Pakistani prime minister, mm-hmm. she goes to have dinner with the Pakistani uh-huh. prime minister, and it's all for like I don't know what the motive was. I thought that was weird. She, I think she was just trying to like distract all like the high level officials, but I'm wondering how she didn't get detained right there once they found out it was a U.S. Like, That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like unauthorized. Yeah, I feel like it's probably a bad move to have anyone from your state department in a country when you're doing a raid on that country. <laughs> <laughs> but she was there and she gets out alive. But what I think is really funny about this scene, right, 
is she goes to meet with the um like all of the officials from Pakistan. It's yep. very undercover, very secretive. So she goes to have dinner with them. She just shows up. Yep. So they have to accommodate for her, you know, diplomatic immunities course, type stuff. Of course. Or diplomatic courtesy. So she shows up. There's all like the high ranking Pakistani officials there. She's got Betsy in tow this time around. Yep. Uh for some reason. She's just taking Betsy <laughs> into it. Always just there. <laughs> yeah. Betsy doesn't have diplomatic immunity. <laughs> They so she takes Betsy, Betsy gets popped. Yeah, yeah. They take she takes Betsy with her. They're at this dinner, and Shaw is the one that he's a gives her salad. Yeah, uh, and he also slips a note into her pocket right mm-hmm. after that as well. Um, but she doesn't notice that it's Shaw, no. of course, um, because you the, know the man that she ran like she has centered a lot of her life around in her media empire. She wouldn't know. Yeah, exactly. Though the story didn't need her to know it yet. Exactly. Is is the thing? Exactly. So she's having conversations with the president um, of Pakistan or the prime minister, or whatever it is over there. Uh, and she also like kind of finds out, but kind of just like figures it out in her head that uh-huh. it's like one of the military leaders that's been working with Shaw yes. and not necessarily the prime minister. Oh, yeah, because she talks about how the prime minister has like this, like their top generals, like a fucking jihadist. Yeah. And yeah, she's yeah, just yeah. talking about that and how like, I don't know why the prime minister would want to work with this jihadist who's known to work with these terrorists when they say they're anti-terrorism. Oh, my God, maybe they're not anti-terrorism as she just magically yeah. thinks that nobody else could. Yeah. And then also at the same time, uh, Douglas Williams had arranged this raid. Mm-hmm. There's a diversion that's going off like, I don't know, like 20 kilometers away or something like that. Yep. And then at the actual place, they're doing the raid like five minute delay mm-hmm. so that everyone is focused on the diversion rather than them actually doing the raid. And he also called the prime minister of the UK and said, we need you to act yes. like it's you doing this raid so that we can get away with it. Oh, yeah, that was the diversion, wasn't it? The diversion was, yeah, was like, yeah. which country was doing it, not the raid itself. Because yeah. they, were, they were trying to find the factory they were making the dirty bombs at. Well, they had they had a second raid going on at the same time, or a second attack. Yeah. Yep. Um, and the the diversion attack was just completely fucking slaughtered. Mm-hmm. Just completely wiped out. Because someone had warned them ahead of time. The traitor yeah. in the White House had warned them ahead of time. And then um, the actual raid that was taking place at the factory did not work. They didn't find anything. Yeah. No information was they, found. They only found dead physicists. Yeah, dead like physicists. I think all the physicists were like dead and shot, like blood yeah. splattered on the walls. That's yeah. it. They're like, "Oh my god, it's a bust!" And then Ellen's getting yelled at by the Pakistani PM. Yeah, the Pakistani PM is like angry at her. Uh-huh. Well, at first he was like, "Do you know anything about this British raid that's happening on our country right now?" She's like, "No." Then like ten minutes later, Ellen oh, Ellen goes to the bathroom and talks to Betty for a while. Yep. And then they come back, and then he's like, "What the fuck? This is an American raid." And then I think doesn't Ellen do like some. Uh, like just solo speech and for just some monologue and gets this dude to back down and then just leaves and then just like fucking leaves. Like she just tells him like, you're going to help us find Shaw and then just fucking dips. Yeah. Like, As Shaw is just right there. Just yeah. Chilling, giggling, giggling like, in the corner. She, she gives him like a speech or a lecture on Al Qaeda and like the Taliban yep, shit. On terrorism. On terrorism. Like, I don't understand why you would let your general be a jihadist. Ugh. Yeah. And then she's also talking about how like Osama bin Laden hit out in Pakistan. Like that's also like a big yeah. point that they bring up every once in a while. And then she just is allowed to leave. She's the most incompetent, competent main character I think I've ever read. Right. Yeah. You know? So she's she's allowed to leave, but um, they basically come away with nothing. They have no information from the raids. Uh, all of the soldiers from the diversion got completely wiped out. Ellen Adams walked away empty handed, doesn't know where these nuclear bombs were. Yep. And it feels just like down and desperate. Yeah. Like they don't know what to do. Because they know there's nukes now, but they uh-huh. don't know where they're going to be. Yeah. How do they fucking find out that it's going to be in America? Do they well, just Shaw assume? slipped a note, right? Oh. Uh, they might have just assumed it was going to be in America, but Shaw slipped a note that said, it said three space 10 space 1600. Yep. So they knew that it was going to be, well, at first they had no idea what it meant. Uh, then eventually Anahita <laughs> figures out that the 310 is Osama bin Laden's death. Yep, it's, so it's Osama just like bin Laden's death day and like some other significant day. I and think. then 1600, they thought it was a time, but it actually means Pennsylvania Avenue, which is the White House. Uh-huh. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, so that's how they figure out there's going to be a bomb underneath the White House or yep. a nuclear bomb at the White House. And they don't know where it is. White House is big. They don't know who planted it because there's some traitor in their midst. Uh-huh. Um, and then this is where they do a fucking raid on the previous president's house. Do you remember this? They that did a black shit ops raid. Made no fucking sense. No fucking sense at all to me. And the, they <laughs> they hire. Oh my god! I want to say it was the people that fucking killed Bin Laden. I wouldn't wait, be surprised. Wait, they get these these covert ops Navy SEAL operators to go to this dude's fucking Florida mansion, right? Because they they got info that Shaw was actually staying with Dunn. Yes, like yeah. he was just fucking chilling with this dude. Because 
I just, I can't, I can't. Anyway, and so they they start, these operators move into his mansion, and they're just fucking sweeping and clearing, like, all yeah. through his kitchen and rooms and everything. They break in. Without getting seen. Without getting seen by any of the staff. They would, they would like, duck into a cupboard when somebody was walking down the hall. Any, any scene with the military is just openly glorifying them. Oh, yeah. Like, talking about how great and steadfast uh-huh. and brave these people and are. And then they just fucking bag and tag uh, Bashir Shah, grab him, fucking black, CIA black bag him, <laughs> yeah. and then lift away. him over their shoulder and somehow get out of the compound without being seen but by anybody. Before that, when they were kind of having their panic, not knowing what to do next, not knowing if like how to get Bashir Shah, uh-huh. they were like, we need to figure out where these bombs are. And they still thought at this point that General Whitehead was the traitor. Yep. So they were like, let's interrogate him and get the bombs and then uh president williams is like let's torture him to get the bombs and ellen's like <laughs> like ellen's like that's too far but we might need to <laughs> <laughs> she goes she goes that's too far studies have shown that torture doesn't work and it often just gives out false information when people are desperate but we might need to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's just hillary clinton just justifying Guantanamo Bay, dog like it's just it's just hillary clinton saying she's okay with torture <laughs> I thought that scene was incredible. God damn. Because they were still doing torture in Obama's White House. Yeah. 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 Because. Yeah. <laughs> and then she, there was also a point where when she was lecturing the uh, Pakistani prime minister, she was also like uh, lecturing him, like saying like, you're working with terrorists. That's unacceptable. Yeah. And there's a brief moment of self-awareness where she says, well, the U.S. hasn't jumped into the bed with the best people either. And then she completely shrugs it off. Just drops it. Yeah. Just drops it. That's, that's the, the. <laughs> That's the most they'll ever acknowledge an American atrocity. Yes. Just, well, we've made some mistakes here and there. Yeah, well, we funded right-wing death squads before. We funded the terrorists that eventually became the terrorists we're now fighting against. Maybe Bashir Mm. Shah wouldn't have happened if we didn't fund the Mujahideen. (laughs) (laughs) Like, there's, throughout this whole book, there's brief moments of self-awareness that she just completely brushes off and does the exact same thing she's criticizing others for doing. It's so, it's so funny. I love it, bro. Anyway, they bag and tag Bashir Shah. Yep. They bring him back to the White House or whatever, like, covert grounds they they have him on. Yeah. And they, they, like, they're all in the room interrogating Some CIA black site. <laughs> yeah, trying to figure this stuff out. Um, and like I said, Anahita figures out what the code means that yep. Bashir Shah slipped her uh, because Ellen couldn't figure it out herself. The Osama bin Laden birthday, because whenever it involves, like, a terrorist, that's Anahita's job. Uh-huh. That's She's got that one then, in the bag. Do you, do you remember why she went to go blackmail the Russian president, like, what info they needed? I, it was something to do with the riddle from the Ayatollah, and I think she figured out that the Russian mafia, because the Russian mafia had supplied the Taliban with the enriched uranium that mm-hmm. they gave to Bashir Shah, so they were really the ones who were like funding all these terrorists and funding his operation. Mm-hmm. So she figured that out somehow, and then she went to go to the Russian president, and she she's talking to him. She's like, "Well, you know, you've had a lot of um your political enemies jailed because of doctored photos of them with like minors, like sexual photos of them with minors." And then she just does that to him. Yeah, she just she just whips out a Photoshop picture of him with a kid, yeah. and that's when she drops the banger of a quote with. Although these pictures aren't as good as you riding a horse. Yep, just straight Obama era culture war. Mm-hmm. I I loved that so yeah. much. And he's like, oh my god, but what? Like he's not going to do anything about it. Yeah, she she blackmails the Russian president. Is it, and the Russian president gives the location of the bombs. Right? Is that what that is? Ah, uh, that might be how they found that out. Yeah. yeah. It's it's something like that. Eventually, they get the locations of the bombs. She blackmails the Russian president. Again, somehow gives out their life. And I was kind of shocked how much she is doing and how little the president of the United States is doing. He did nothing. Douglas he, Williams only did, like, the military thing. Because, oh, that might be after. There was a point where they thought that the bomb was going to go off at a certain time. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. Douglas Williams and Tim Beecham, this is the only fucking hint in the entire book, I'm pretty sure that you get that Tim Beecham is the actual traitor. It's uh, Douglas Williams and him are sitting in the Oval Office waiting for the bomb to go off under them. And they say, oh, Douglas Williams closed his eyes. And after the time passed, he opened them. And Tim Beecham was sitting there eyes wide open. Yeah. That's yeah. the only hint you fucking get. Yeah. Wild. And also General Whitehead was there talking to them, too, I think, about his dog named Pine. Something and about And he named that, it yeah. after a neighborhood in Canada. And this ends up being like a late story plot point. Uh-huh. There's some, uh, no, I think that's how they actually find the nuclear bombs. There's some journalist that was, like, hiding out, used to be in the White House press corps, is now hiding out in Canada. Oh, Under a yeah. different name. He used to be a journalist, and I think he became a far-right guy, because this is when they introduced oh, the website. okay. They start yep. talking about, uh, what the fuck was it? Like, something informant? High-level informant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High okay, level okay, okay. Informant. We, com, mi- we missed which an is, important plot point. Which is a website beyond the dark web. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. So we missed this plot point. So while they were in, I think Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's his fucking name? Peter Hamilton. Peter Hamilton he sends about H-I-L. a secure message yeah. to Betsy that's just H L I. Yep. It's just H L I. And then Betsy's like, well, what does this mean? They think about it for a while. That gets referenced like 10 chapters before we figure uh-huh, out what happens. Uh-huh. And then later they find out. Because they thought Tim Beecham or Whitehead was the high level informant. Right. Yep. So then Peter Hamilton's dead. Right. Yeah, Peter he got Hamilton fucking gets got in his he apartment. He gets got. And then they eventually find out that HLI means high level informant. They have to meet up with this dude that was working in the White House press corps that was following this right wing narrative. Uh-huh. But he eventually fled the United States because he got afraid. He was getting yep. threatened and shit. He was g- catching on to the QAnon vibes, exactly, basically. Exactly. So he fled. They find out from him what this whole website is about. Because he has, like, the URL tattooed on him right. or some dumb shit like right. that, like, right over his heart. And he talks about how, like, this used to be a scar representing my sins, but now now it's been the most important thing for me defending my country or some, yeah. some dumb shit like that. And so they find out what website they need to go to through this <laughs> dude. And the, they type in the website Beyond the Dark Web. Yep. Um, and it's, like, it comes up with this door on the screen. And this yeah. is how they find out where the bombs are. It wasn't through the Russian president. I don't even remember what she blackmailed him for it, to be honest. but Probably just, like, the... I don't fucking know. I think they were looking for, like, shit manifest to figure out when the bombs could have got there. Something because like that. I think when the, um, the like, Osama bin Laden birthday code, that's when they thought the bomb was first going to go off. And they're like, what the fuck? This didn't really do anything. I don't know what's good with that. And then that ends up being the password uh-huh. to get into the door on the HIL website that lies beyond the dark web. Yeah. And then they could see where the cameras were. And right. there were three cameras located on each of the bombs. Yeah. 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 So and the, so they figure that out. And as soon as they figure that out, they see that there's one in the White House. There's one in New York City. Yep. At like the Grand Train Station. or What's the name? Grand Central Station. Grand Central Station. Yep. And then there's one in Kansas City. Kansas. Which I don't. Of all fucking places. I, I don't know Kansas. what the significance of Kansas. Maybe she wanted to include like a conservative state. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But there's there's one in Kansas, um, and then they they somehow defuse the White House bomb, and they get the other ones defused too. Well, that's like that's like at the very end. Though. Oh yeah, that was at the very. So yeah. right before that, yep. they're on the computer. General Whitehead pulls a fucking gun on the president. He he like co- bursts in with like two military guys, yeah. right? Two fucking soldier dudes. He whips out a gun, puts it to the fucking president's head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because General Whitehead is still playing up that he's like a traitor. Exactly. Right? He's but still- off screen, he got out of prison and like, did they meet with Ellen yet? Or did Ellen just get good vibes from him and I go th- along I with I think it? she just got the vibes. She's fucking crazy. Douglas Williams and him like orchestrated this beforehand, this yep. show. Yep. Because they wanted to root out who the traitors were uh-huh. while everyone was in the room. And of course they knew it wasn't Ellen. Exactly. Of course, because Ellen's never, literally perfect. She could never be the traitor. Um, so Whitehead she loves her country. busts in, put a, puts a fucking gun to the head of the president. <laughs> he puts it right in the, I'll fucking do it right <laughs> yeah. here, right now. And General Whitehead's like still playing it up that he's the traitor. You know, mm-hmm. he's like this this white nationalist QAnon. Yeah, guy. they're acting like it's like a military coup, which threw me off because it this literally came out of nowhere. I yeah. was so confused. And then this gets Tim Beecham to basically start confessing by accident that it's him. He's like, what yep. are you doing? That kind of thing. Yep. And then this also gets Barb Stenhauser. To confess because General yeah. Whitehead's like accusing you. He's like, I got this all. I got all this message from you. What are you talking about? Like, uh, you were telling me to do this. And so both of them basically confess. Uh huh. Barb Stenhauser and Tim Beecham were both traitors. Yep. And was there another one, or oh, or was the other one just Shaw? We find out later that actually it includes a number of high level officials. HIL wasn't just HLI wasn't one person. It was a multitude of high level officials, including at least one Supreme Court justice. And I'd yeah, argue yeah, that yeah. it's six. But <laughs> <laughs> or no, oh my God, we missed it. During all this, Bashir Shaw is in the White House because yeah. they they black bagged him and brought him to the White House. He's tied up and this dude starts fucking monologuing. Cause Ellen's like, why would you do this? Like why why do you want to kill all these innocent people? And the fucking terrorist, the like, he's built up to be the worst guy in the entire fucking world, about to kill millions of oh people. Oh my God. He monologues and he starts talking about, well, you see, the American conservative right, they're doing all of these things. They're undermining democracy. When is it just going to lead straight into fascism? I'm only like accelerating the the decline. It was already crumbling from within and just uh-huh. liberal shit like that, which it's like, yeah, this is true, but you're a fucking terrorist. Yeah. That also would never happen, by the Absolutely way. Absolutely like, not. The furthest right people on the fucking planet. The furthest in the religious right. Yeah. Like, we we memed about how um, Tucker Carlson was agreeing with the Taliban yeah. when we were covering the gender, Afghanistan. The gender study stuff. Exactly, yeah. when we were covering Afghanistan last summer. But it's like, yeah, they, they do agree with the Taliban. 
<laughs> but no, no, here a terrorist has better morals than an American conservative. Mm -hmm. Like, it was the most preachy thing. It took me out of it. I almost fucking died when I was listening to this. <laughs> I'm terminally ill now. <laughs> but what I forgot to mention this. Uh, before this meeting, uh, Ellen gets back to the United States from this Russia. This is all the last four chapters. Yeah, Ellen gets back to the United States from Russia. Um, it, in the morning, Barb, or not Barb, um, Betty. Betsy mm -hmm. is now like cooking breakfast yep. and she's like getting ready to go with Ellen to the white house to have this meeting with she's all like, of no, them. Betsy. And she's like, Betsy, you got to stay here. I need you here. I Which need somehow... you to take care of Catherine. I need you to do all this. Yeah. But Betsy is like within the blast radius. <laughs> <laughs> and also, somehow Betsy later figures out that she's, like, integral to this plan because eventually Ellen calls Betsy, like, on FaceTime. Yeah. And is, like, showing her everything that's happening, but, like, secretly. Yeah. Uh, and she's not saying anything. And somehow Betsy just knows to not talk. <laughs> and then Betsy's like, oh, my God. Like, because she sees a gun to the head of the president. She sees that people are, like, freaking out. And she realizes that she has to call the vice president of the United States. Yeah. Someone who has never been mentioned in the entire Not once. Book. Not once. Maybe once in passing, maybe. Yeah. And I don't even really know what the vice president did. Uh, neither do I. Yeah. I. I Honestly, the last couple chapters are so fucking incomprehensible. <laughs> yeah. Es especially after that monologue from Bashaw about American conservatism. I'm just like, it took, honestly, it took me out of all of it. Mm -hmm. Outside of all, like, this is one of the worst fictional double crosses I have ever seen. Yeah. The, the Tim Beecham twist literally fucking came out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Because it was already a twist to have Whitehead be the fucking villain. And that already felt like it came out of nowhere. And it's like, actually, no. Even though we just spent a bunch of time developing how he actually was it's tim beecham even though we walked back all of that development yeah what and, the fuck and the way they figured it out was that tim beecham had his family leave dc to go to utah yep. and general whitehead didn't that's literally that's ellen it. mentions that's the only thing she had to go off of and that it was just a hunch and she just got it right mm -hmm. all of her hunches are just right she's got fucking insane intuition she's probably omniscient like if like yeah tim beecham moves his family out but i guess the only way they would know that he's a traitor because he moved his family out is if he didn't know about the nuclear bombs. And I don't even remember if he was aware of that or not. Because, like, if know. he was aware of the nuclear bombs and he Wouldn't moved his he family away. Wouldn't he try to take administrative leave and right. go away? Right. But I guess I guess he couldn't have, he didn't know they were in the United States or he didn't know they were in D.C. Uh -huh. But if he knew there were bombs coming, he could have just took a fucking guess. Yeah. He got his family away from danger. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Like, I, I, anybody would have done that. I, I just, like, I just, I just, I don't understand this fucking book. I don't understand just that, that whole monologue honestly tore it apart for me. Like, how are you going to draw a distinction between these two, like, right-leaning figures? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just don't fucking get it. It's the, it's so pretentious. It's so preachy. It is the worst kind of, you can't even call it activism. Yeah. Who the fuck is reading this book other than I'm with her people? Right. And, and us. us. Uh, <laughs> and all, all the Hiddo listeners. Exactly. Right and the at least one person I know read this book with us. Shout out Emma, our listener from so, up north. Yeah. So they find and they disarm all of the bombs. <laughs> Um, yes. and or so no, dog the chapter they're sitting there in the White House they're like oh my god we figured all this out but what are we going to do about the bombs and it's 15 seconds to go off it's like tick tick this all takes place in an hour and like tick 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 five four three two one then the chapter ends mm -hmm. and the last chapter chapter 45 doesn't it start at the State of the Union like the President's State of the Union yeah. address yep. yep it just starts there like, or no, it starts at like a press conference. It starts at a press conference and you're like, oh, so the bomb didn't fucking go off, which was kind of interesting a little yeah. bit. It was like the first time since the beginning where I was like, oh, that was neat. Yeah, it's like if a TV show, like an episode ends on a cliffhanger and then the next season picks up and it's just like a totally, like three months later. Yeah, no, because so that's like, what well, it was. Clearly it was they fucking three survived. Three fucking months later and I was, I was like, oh. Yeah. Wow. And now, so now Douglas Williams and Ellen are like besties, of course. Yes. For a second, I thought there was going to be an actual, an actual enemies to lover storyline. Oh my and God. I thought they were yeah. going to fall in love. They're going to kiss. Yeah. I, I, I thought they were <laughs> actually going to fall in love. That would have been a better ending. Turns out he just trusts her now. Yes. Like he, he just has respect for Ellen Adams because she worked really, really hard. Now he's just her actual secretary of state instead of her secretary of state because he was trying to be petty. Right. Right. Um, and he's given a press conference, like, describing everything that happened, all the investigations, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. uh, Gil and Ana Hida are reunited. Gil learns how to That's open right. up, finally, rather That's than right. just being a journalist investigating everything. Catherine's running her media mogul empire right. and all that stuff. Uh, and that kind of, like, wraps up all of the all of the storylines. Right. And then once. they just fucking explain, like, oh, actually, we had people working on disarming the bombs as that was yeah. all happening that we, the audience, were just not privy to, which yeah. felt so unsatisfying. Like, they actually had more time in New York at Grand Central Station to defuse those, so that we weren't worried about that at all. Yeah. And then that's it. And then the book ends. The book fucking ends, I shit you not, with Ellen and Douglas just chilling in, like, the Oval Office, I think, right? Yep. And then they start talking, like, 
wait, they realize something and they start looking on their computer like, holy shit. Not only was HIL just like a couple high level officials, it's everywhere. People with anthrax, with all these other things. What are we going to yeah. do? Yeah, because they saw that um, there was a bunch of like like very dangerous materials missing there's a bunch from their of labs. Like, pl- yeah, there's a bunch yeah. of plutonium missing from labs. There's a bunch of like anthrax, other biological weapons missing. They're like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And that's it. That's the fucking ending. They just set up a sequel, baby. State of Terror 2, even more terror. Yeah, and they said at least like six, seven times throughout the book, I'm in a state of uh-huh. terror. Uh-huh. We're in a state of terror. Fucking awful <laughs> like, book, dude. Like for the record, for the record, I get the general idea that America has been slipping to fascism, right? We've seen uh-huh. it happen in other countries. It happened in Hungary. Viktor Orban, literally a fascist. Like, we've seen it happen before. Uh-huh. And I agree that there is, uh, like, right-wing sentiments, far-right sentiments, white nationalist sentiments growing in the country. We talk about it every fucking week. Right, but the way that this book portrays it is so fucking goofy. It's pretentious and corny. It's and so those goofy. those are uh, two of the, the highest sins you can commit in my uh-huh. eyes. Pretentious and corny. Yeah. Like Bashir Shaw giving a lecture about American like, conservatism, like center right people about yeah about American conservatism, yeah. like, as if as if he's some like communist, <laughs> like Antifa. It's like it's like they're trying to do like the Carly Morgenthau or like the fucking oh my god, this character is actually very left leaning and they're right, but they just kill people. Oh no, so they're bad, right? Like Bashir Shah was saying, like you've you've allowed this to fester. You've allowed people to be disillusioned and hateful uh-huh. and feel like they need to get their country back. Well, Bashir Shah was working with those people. Exactly, he was working with the president and the people that were feeling disillusioned, the the QAnoners of this uh-huh. universe. Like he he was the one working with. But them. he was the one manipulating all of the American right to do all that. Yeah, it's just like it's it's such a weird portrayal of the American. It right. It almost like bails them out for any responsibility. No, literally you know? though. Like I, just, I like it, it I almost understand. it almost redirects blame and it's like look it's actually the terrorists overseas that are doing this to us it's not ourselves that's causing yeah, our own division it's not an issue here yeah and and every time again they keep mentioning like American atrocities that they just fucking gloss over uh-huh. there are two times to- there's one time in the book like in the middle where like she's mourning about things and the national anthem fucking plays yeah and she starts talking about how it made her heart swell up and fill her with pride uh huh what the fuck. Yeah. The, <laughs> goofy ah. Goofy ah book. I, I cannot handle how goofy <laughs> that book was. It was so terrible. Many times throughout the book, I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital from cringing. Oh, God. Like, it, was, it was bad. <laughs> and it's your fault that we read it. I don't understand how it has good reviews. I, I honestly don't. No. Who is like, this book for? Just die hard. It's for like, die hard I don't know, stay at home liberal moms. Yeah. Like that's got to be it. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't enjoy this book unless you just you just don't critically consume media, I guess. Like don't get me wrong. I was entertained by some parts. Like some parts I could like imagine it being like a TV show. Yeah. In the beginning like I was like, drama. this would be a cool movie. Right. But other parts, the parts I could tell were from Hillary Clinton, the parts where it's like admiring America's greatness and uh-huh. stuff like that just made me want to die. Shut the fuck up. It's so annoying. Please shut the fuck up. And also just Ellen knowing how to solve literally every problem takes uh-huh. all the suspense out of every situation because it's like Ellen's going to just figure out this riddle and de-arm the bombs herself at this point. I feel like no character like went through an arc either. Yeah. Like I've, I've, Charles <laughs> went through an arc. He took a life. Bro, bro had mad character development with yeah. that one. Bro took a this life. fucking reeling over the fact that he ended someone else. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, other than that, like, their Gil and his mother's relationship was magically repaired. Yeah. When we don't really understand why it was rocky to begin with in the first place. Uh-huh. Um, Betsy and fucking Ellen were just, like, kind of besties the whole time. Yep. Um, Simile walked into a bar. An Simile adjective walk walked into a, into a bar. You know what I mean? I feel like she didn't change it all throughout the book. I feel like no character really had an arc other than the the enemies to friends between Douglas, <laughs> Douglas and Ellen. Um, Catherine's still a multi millionaire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ellen's still a multi millionaire. <laughs> Like nobody actually struggles. All these people are still in their their various positions of power, and they're the good ones though, because they're the Democrats. The good guys they, won. They did no wrong. Yeah, yeah, the good guys won until State of Terror two, even more terror. I think the most yeah, <laughs> I think the most telling part of the book was at the very beginning. Yeah, when the book earnestly admits that President Williams had to tailor his State of the Union speech to 
pad down on expectations from the election. Oh my god, dude! I know. Just, just like cats, completely out of the just bag. Straight he, up, like, like they just straight up admit that he has to pad down on expectations to let everyone know that he's not going to do anything for them. It's like throughout the whole book, Hillary Clinton is trying to like romanticize our political system, but not by at least lying and saying that it works, but yeah. by saying that it doesn't work and it's beautiful because of that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Awful book. Yeah. Awful fucking book. Absolutely terrible. If you struggled through us with it, I appreciate you. Even if you just struggled through this episode. Exactly. This bonus content. We still appreciate you. (laughs) If you just go read a plot synopsis, it'll all make sense. But, well, I can't say it'll make sense. But you'll It'll understand where we're coming yeah. from. <laughs> you'll, you'll get all the plot points added together, and you'll still get a sum total at the end. Tell us if we missed any major points, like another random journalist having a tattoo of a far-right website just right <laughs> over his heart. <laughs> I almost just completely forgot about that because it was so nonsense. No, same. It's just the start of a random chapter. We're just with this dude in Canada, and he's living a good and life. The only reason that he made that connection is because General Whitehead's dog is named after the same town that this dude lives in. <laughs> like, what the yeah. fuck kind of connection? Because <laughs> General Whitehead's says yeah my dog pines is named after this town is a small town in canada uh-huh. and then they're like pines where do i where have i heard that before <laughs> and it's like it's just like on. i just i just can't get with it like the the drama was a little interesting in the beginning yeah yeah uh quickly didn't because it got so fucking convoluted with all this like foreign affair nonsense right yeah. And then the fucking characters weren't interesting. Not at all. Like, never once did anyone say anything snappy. When they tried to have their characters say, like, snappy things, it was always the most cringy thing, like Bashir Shah ranting about American conservatives. My brother in Christ, you're talking to a jihadist. Yeah. Like... (laughs) Ellen saying torture is okay. Ellen saying the U.S. working with terrorists, it's, it's okay if we do it. Exactly. It's okay if we have this Ellen stuff. Ellen saying, no, 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 no. It's a bombing, so it must have been a Muslim person. It's yeah. okay if you racially profile them. Oh, my them goodness. Them describing Muslim countries as shithole countries, a la Donald Trump. And I, I like how they, they painted um, Homeboy, former uh, press secretary. Peter Hamilton. Peter Hamilton. Yeah. They painted him as if he was, like, pathetic for writing that book about Trump, right. which is pathetic, right? All right. the Lincoln Project conservatives are fucking pathetic. But it's also, like, if we look at the meta text of all this, this book in of itself is fucking pathetic. Yeah. You know? Like she, maybe it was a self-aware reference. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope we've illustrated you how this is so clearly just her own fan fiction. Yes. Like, she had a dream one night, and she, she hit up Lewis Penny and was like, hey, yo, mm-hmm. let's get this shit done. Uh-huh. Yeah, God. no. I mean, literally, when I said it's just like Veep, it's just like Veep when <laughs> fucking um, uh, well, the the main character I can't remember her name right I now. I can't either. The Veep. The Veep. Yes. Had um, had someone write a book for her, <laughs> <laughs> and then acted like she wrote it. <laughs> like, it's it's just that, like, it, but without any of the humor. It's so bad, dog. It's so it's uh, not good. Earnestly give it a zero out of ten. Yeah, I, I, there, there's not many redeeming qualities for this one, folks. It's, it's, it's a bad one. Uh, I would not recommend you buy this. We had no. to spend like what eighteen dollars. I on dropped eighteen dollars on it. Yeah, discuss. It didn't even give us the text of the book, just audio. That's so annoying about audiobooks. Mm-hmm. I actually, what's the point of not allowing me to look at the text too? What if I want to read along? What if I want to fucking dig, get, a, get a quote out of it? Yeah. without having to fucking type it out while I was reading. Yeah, it'd be like. So many sections I had to re-listen to just to like type it out. I'm so it's sorry for so you. So frustrating. <laughs> and you know they're the worst section. Yeah. Well, I think that sums it up for our our hit up book club number one. It up. Our cover of uh, our, our coverage of State of Terror. So true. The State of Terror. I was in a state of terror reading this. I true. <laughs> We're in a state of terror now. But now, uh, gotta like give we, a special thanks. We do. We do. We do. So uh, we gotta give a special thanks to our patrons. Uh, we uh, patrons are listening to this early. Got to. Uh, if you want to listen to all of our Love content, that bonus early, content, you have to become a patron. Have to. Morally required. Uh, we got some exciting things coming up. We, we, we we're getting a merch website set up right now. We are. I, uh, full I've, announcement coming soon. I'm entering production on patron mugs uh, Thursday. That's right. Tomorrow. That's right. Yes. And uh, we'll be we'll be we'll be announcing some cool stuff soon. Exactly. So stay tuned. Pump out all forty of those for all the all the wonderful listeners who subscribed before. What was that? Our four hundred dollar goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So before we go. Special thanks. Special Gotta give a special thanks to Cricket Scrapbook Layouts, Nikki Nine Lives, Caden Kraut, Terrence Nicholson, Chris the Postman, Christy Beck, Thalia Katz, 40% Spite, 
Andrew Harris, Mike Chaplinski, Mattias T, John G, The B-Plot, Omar Zuno, Clayton LaForte, Ash Fairblood, Mark Yeager, Sarah McRoberts, Derek Messina, Dylan B, Satan's Menstrual Cycle, The Mind Sculptors, Kaz, Caleb Joy, Jim Bobs, Carl Goodness. D, Rich Toro, Tari, Gavin Meyer, Maldonado, Hunter W, Fergalaki, Max Vasquez, Jacob Rogers, my God. and my mom. Thank you, you all for supporting the show on Patreon. It. You're the reason we can do cool stuff like this. Exactly. Um, your Patreon money funded our buying the books. It did. So it did. that's if, all you. And if you want to enjoy more Hiddle Book Clubs, maybe like sound off in the comments what we should read next. We, we've got a uh, popular request, True Allegiance, Ben Which Shapiro's novel. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be worse. <laughs> It's just going to be... That is going to be orders of magnitude. <laughs> it's going to be like... This one was entertaining. State of Terror was entertaining. At times, it's going to be just at derived least, of at all least creativity. Lewis Penny's like an established author. Uh-huh. Like she, she has like critical acclaim for her other like mystery work. Yeah. But Ben Shapiro... Ben Shapiro is a wannabe famous liberal arts person. Exactly. Like that, that's what he is. It's, that's going to be awful. So like we've had requests for True Allegiance. Um, and you know, sound off in the comments what you want to see. Maybe we'll run a poll on like the Patreon, on Twitter, on Instagram stories. You know how it is. I know Bill Clinton's got a book, but I feel like that be so boring it's it's another one that's like it, the president's daughter but that's okay. like a james patterson collab yeah 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 yeah. I'm never fucking right i feel like that one would be patterson so boring that's I'd what i'm saying i feel like up. that one wouldn't be fun like this one yeah i feel like that wouldn't be like a good self-insert yeah unless there's like a unless there's a plot about him getting top like <laughs> <laughs> unless he cheats on his wife with like his secretary oh my goodness that would be so good <laughs> that would be so good Leave some suggestions if you want. What do you want us to read next? Please do. What you want us to read next. <laughs> and have a, have a great week, everybody. Yeah. I hope you enjoy this. Try not to be in a state of terror. <laughs>